Hello, I'm Lorraine Bourne with Progenealogists. We work with Ancestry.com and I'd like to talk to you today a few minutes about obituaries and the, uh, going from the obituaries to the grave site. And obituaries are an underutilized tool in genealogy research, especially in modern day research where it's a little bit more difficult with privacy issues to be able to obtain information about ancestors because so many um, records are being closed or not available to people. And so these are great tools. Obituaries were in the Americas as early as 1700. And later in the 1800s, more information was provided in obituaries. The earlier you go in obituaries, the less information there is. But as we come towards our modern day obituaries, we find out quite a bit about our families. We find out about things such as biographical information, occupation, religious affiliation, schools, awards, family members, places where family members lived. It helps tie and link several family members together. And they also provide much more information than your normal death record. An obituary can also tell you where a loved one is buried if you have no idea where that cemetery is. So obituaries provide valuable information. One thing that you need to be aware of in obituaries is as you're looking at larger cities, the larger the city is, the more newspapers there are that can print that obituary. Also, obituaries can be printed in areas outside the place where a person passed away because there are several different um, places where family members may live in this day and age. Many people, uh, even close family members, can live across the continent or even in other countries. Ancestry has a lot of interesting sites and so we're going to just start um, going through some of the sites Ancestry has but we're also going to show a few other sites that will assist you in finding obituaries but also then taking that obituary to locating a grave site. And all of this is done online where you don't have to leave your home. One caution you should be aware of is that sometimes indexes can transcribe information incorrectly. So if you do find your cemetery gravesite, it would be worthwhile if there's not an image of that gravestone to call the cemetery and verify that information to make sure it's accurate. Here we have um, the Ancestry homepage. And we're going to switch you over so you can see the screen. Okay, so we have our Ancestry homepage here now. And um, we're in the search screen. If you put your mouse over the search screen, a very valuable tool on the Ancestry site is the card catalog. So when you click on that card catalog, you see all kinds of databases that are available on your right. But right over here on the left, there's a title and there's a keyword. My recommendation is, is if you don't know the full title, and even if you do, perhaps put it in the keyword search so that you can go ahead and find information. Now, if I put newspapers here in the keyword search, then we come up with quite a bit of information and um, come up with obituaries and all kinds of collections, all kinds of newspapers. If you can see here that there's 1,507 entries at Ancestry.com that has a lot of different newspapers. Notice here, this is the Times, London, England. So you have even different places. This is the Stars and Stripe, Europe, Mediterranean, and North Africa. So not only do you have places in the United States, but you also have places um, in the uh, around the world that will help you with your research. This is Fold3. Fold3 has an extensive number of newspapers as well. And is if you go, this is you can find this at fold3.com. And if you check on their newspapers, you can find that there's quite a bit of information here. Um, they, they have a blog spot that talks about it, but they also have a lot of newspapers um, that you can access there at Fold3. This is Progenealogist, United States Genealogy Sleuth page. We also have um, sleuth pages for areas outside the US. 
international areas. But you can find cemetery sites here. You can find um, newspapers, obituaries um, right here, and biographies. There are several different links that you can find that will can assist you as you go through and look for different uh, places. Over here is information about vital records. So this is a tool also that you can use to help you and assist you with locating your ancestors. Your county library sys system can often have um, information there as well um, that can assist you in locating your ancestors. And if you go into, in this case, the research room of the Salt Lake County Library Services, Look at all the different sites that you have for genealogy. You have Ancestry.com, HeritageQuest, America's Obituaries and Death Notices, World Vital Records, Primary Sources, Utah Digital Newspapers. So never overlook your local public library because they can have a lot of information that can assist you in finding information. I'm going to go into the America uh, Obituary right here, and I would have to type in my information for my library card. And um, there I can go into Utah, which is, I wanted to show you this information. And here you have all these different newspapers in Utah that are covered. Um, and no matter what state you, you can use this for all over the, the United States. And here, my mother recently passed away, and so I can type in her name. Oh, excuse me, I need to leave it all over here. And it brought up her obituary when she passed away. And this saves extensive money because I can find all this information. This has all types of information about my mother and, and tells all the things that she did as well as explaining a little bit of her personality. Um, and so this is one of those sites that you can look at and go further with. Um, I need to find, okay, we did full three. I'm just, okay. This is called smalltownnewspapers.com. This also takes a lot of information from small town newspapers. So that is very worthwhile to check for obituaries as well. There's other sites that we can check and see to look. Once you find your place and your grave site from your newspapers, then you can go to places such as Find a Grave. And I'm just going to go through these and then we'll go back and use some of these tools. I just want you to be able to see these. This is Find a Grave. This is interment.net. Um, this is the U.S. Gen Web Project, and as you can see, there are state, foreign, military, um, veterans programs, register a cemetery, um, tombstone photo projects. There's quite a bit of information that's there. There are um, ethnic groups that provide cemetery indexes online, and this is an African American Cemeteries Online Index that shows all the states of the United States. Um, however, only the ones with the blue highlighted links will be the, will show that type of information. So um, that's another source that you can go to and look at information. This is Jewish Gen, Line, Gen Online Worldwide Burial Index or Burial Registry that is um, at Ancestry.com that provides a lot of good information. Uh, Ancestry.com has a lot of burial indexes and cemetery indexes and newspaper uh, um, indexes. So it's a really valuable, worthwhile tool that can take you from one index to another. And I found that some of the same indexes that for my state are also carried at Ancestry.com. So it'd be really worthwhile to check the card catalog like I showed at the beginning to check and see if there's something there for your state or for your local area. Um, there's the D United States Department of Veterans Affairs and that can show you um, where a person's buried. I have an uncle who is buried and his name is Frank Nelson and so I can look up his cemetery record here and 
notice that this is not my uncle, but notice that um, it, you can look at a map of the cemetery and be able to look at that information. Um, or you can, there was a highlight, a hyperlink to um, information about the cemetery. So you can see where your loved one is buried. Now there's funeral home records that you should not overlook for obituaries that also help you. Um, this is Fitch Hills Funeral Home um, in the Midwest and they spell genealogy wrong but they do show obituaries and then they also have some valuable records. This is a little bit dark but um, if you were to look here you would be able to see the years and they have indexes of years of people that they have buried at this funeral home. It's been in existence for quite some time. And this is one of the funeral homes who put their funeral home records online. Um, be patient when you call these people to ask for information because they may not be able to get to it immediately. Um, they are busy companies, but send them a respectful request and quite often they'll respond. You might be able to talk to them a few minutes online as well. Let's see. I'm looking for my this is McDougal Funeral Home. Again, they have obituaries and um, they carry more current ones. They usually only carry these obituaries for about a year. And so I recently also had a brother pass away. And I can look up his obituary. It doesn't show anything when I type that, but if I go to L and then I can look and there he is right there. Um, so this is, and it tells a little bit about his life legacy. So those are some ways in which you can use funeral records. Going in to find a grave. Hang on, can you hang on a second? We're having a little problem with your audio. Okay. So, let's see if we can fix this. So do I need to start back somewhere? No, I think we have, hang on just a second. Everything okay? Okay, if anybody can hear us. We're trying to fix the audio. We're understanding there are a few problems with it, so hang on just a minute. Okay, let's try that. See if that helps. And... Lorraine, I'm going to let you get back to this and we'll see if that helps the audio. Okay, great. Thanks, Lorraine. Thank you. Um, here at Find a Grave, they have 70 million grave records. You can search for a cemetery. You can add burial records. Um, you can view recently added names. You can scroll through their online cemetery. And you can uh, join the Find a Grave uh, community. There's a lots of ways to... View. And I'm going to look for my mother and quite a few sites come up um, quite a few names come up um, and I I'm going to ask it to search only name fields and again I'm not finding it's not doing it quite the same way as I did earlier so I'm going to go backwards a little bit and um, find her again because there's some really interesting she actually is um, in some very interesting um, areas on here and I wanted to show you how it goes by from place to place and uh, so I'm going to try and see if I can get that let's go here this is the better search Yes. Okay. So this is Grace. I'm, I'm not going to put in a middle name. I found when I put in her middle name, even though it's in her obituary, it didn't come up. And so you might try different search variations on this. She was born when I 27, and she died in 2001. All. And so I'm going to go there. Now I see her. And you can see there are two entries here. She's buried in Valley View Memorial Park. But when I bring her up, it brings up some really nice things. Um, I'm pretty certain that this was added um, 
by the funeral home. Anyway, it was not added by me. We're having some problems with both audio and video now, so we're going to we're having we're pushing out a note that we're going to log off for a minute and then come right back on. Okay. So. We're trying this one more time. I wanted to bring you back to the beginning page of Find Your Graves. Um, search 70 million grave records. That's where we want to go. We want to type in Grace Lee. And she was born in 1927 and she died in 2010. And now as you can see, there are two, she's both the same person, but there have been two entries. This one here is the best because it has more information. It has her tombstone, some pictures, and some other information. And somebody's um, left the flowers. So um, this is her obituary. Again, as it appeared in the newspaper, some beautiful pictures of her. And then her burial site. Um, Notice down here, you can create family links in grave, uh, Find a Grave. Um, originally, this was linked to Chester Owens Thomas, her father, and Sarah Elizabeth Howell, her mother. But her spouse, Leo Lamond Lee, was not entered, nor were her son, uh, Wayne Thomas Lee, her daughter, Catherine Lee Waite, and her son, David Thomas Lee. These were added. Um, if I were to click on Leo Lamond Lee, you see how that works. Um, it doesn't have a picture of his gravestone, but it does here. Only Catherine is listed here, so I can go back and um, connect the other children. And then his parents are noticed. Um, and this is, this is a, um, the cemetery where they were buried. I'm going to go backwards because you can keep linking as much as you would like, but I would like to show you some interesting things with Grace's parents. Here with Chester Owens Thomas, it shows the Thomas tombstone, and it shows a cemetery photo. Um, and they're buried in Malad City. Now, if I were to link on Sarah Elizabeth Howell, there's a little bit more information on that same tombstone. Here's the front. There's the cemetery, how it looks. But notice on the back of the tombstone are all their children listed and their dates of birth and those that have been deceased. Um, a few more of those need to be added for those who are deceased, but all their children are linked there, which is very, very interesting. So um, you can keep traveling. Now, um, on Chester's, one thing I should have showed you is... Um, I believe there's a link to his parent, his father, his father, John Roberts Thomas. And again, I see a cemetery photo and more information. And then there's uh, John Roberts Thomas's parents, Benjamin. And we find here some wonderful things. There's a, a, a valley where they lived and where they had their home. This is a, a picture of the original home. And there is... Um, Benjamin Thomas's picture. So there's some really valuable things that you can find when you're moving from uh, link to link. And so it, that's kind of a fun way to use that. Um, oops, we already did that. I'm going to go forward. Um, okay, so here we are on the next one. Now Google Earth is another site that is really good because um, you can do a Google search Valley View Memorial Park, but notice all these other cemeteries that are brought uh, up for cemeteries in that close proximity. If you might be looking for a family member, you might find other cemeteries that you might be able to access as well. This, val this is the Valley View Memorial Park, and I can click on this link here. If it's gonna, I don't know if it's going to let me do this, but you should. I should be, there we go. And it should be it should allow me to zoom in on this cemetery. There we go, and you can get a feeling for what the cemetery itself looks like on Google Earth. So that's another way of looking at cemeteries. Um, let's see here. Oops, it went backwards again. So let me just one moment patience with me. I'm sorry. Oops, and that went to the end. Um, it, I'm going to have to flip through these. I'm sorry. This will give you a review of what you, or we, are, we looked at. Here we go. Um, there's some online 
indexes that you can search. And this is a genealogy guide to, these are death indexes and records, and these are different online sources that you can search for each state. If I were to go to Utah, Utah death certificates, Utah death index, newspapers and obituaries, and then also some of the counties have some of that information. So that's a, a valuable resource tool. Again, we're back here at Ancestry in the card catalog, and this Utah Cemetery Index can also be found at the state site, and this is the case where I'm, I told you earlier, where there's a Utah Cemetery Index at the state site, um, government site for Utah, but there's also um, this same information is here at Ancestry.com. Here's the, the Utah Cemetery Inventory, where I can search it at Ancestry.com. There's the Utah death registers I can search. Um, some of the uh, people that I showed you on Find a Grave were in Idaho, and you can see there's the Idaho death index. There's a, the state site for the Utah burial search that contains the same information at Ancestry.com. And then here's your Utah death certificate search. Overall, there's quite a bit of information that you can find um, online. And Another place is, this is a search engine for called McCobble that's just dedicated solely to genealogy research. And I typed in Grace Lee, and it brought, and notice I put the quotes. I, you have to put the quotes around this, or it'll search Grace, and then Lee, and then obituary. So if you want Grace Lee only to show up, then you can do that. Um, I'm just trying to, okay. I, I'm missing, I think, one other website. There's Billion of Graves. Um, let me see if I can find that one for you. Okay, there's a, here's another grave site, a new grave site place that's very interesting. You can use your own um, cell phone or iPod and um, download Billion Graves as an application and then go to the grave site that you want, take a picture of that grave site and upload it. So that's a way to share grave sites, but you can also search and look for grave sites at this um, website. So it's that's another version on grave sites and, and tombstones. There's quite a bit of information that you can find. Don't be afraid to try several different search engine terminologies to or search engines and different terminologies within that search engine, several search terms, to try and help you find um, different ways of searching. Every time you search in a different way, new things will come up. Thank you and have a good day.